Some of you expressed concern about the length of these videos. For your convenience, check out the table of contents on the right hand side. Feel free to start at the beginning and work your way through the video for some awesome in-depth insights. But if you see what you came for, or just want to see something over that you didn't catch the first time, please feel free. And as always guys, thanks for tuning in. Hey guys, and welcome back to Crash Course, where we basically teach you everything there is to know about playing StarCraft. Um, we're continuing with our Zerg lessons today, and we're going to be covering uh, quite a variety of topics. Uh, we're going to start really, really basic, because StarCraft always begins at a fundamental level. However, we're going to then take those fundamentals and run absolutely batshit with them. Hope you're ready. Anyways, we're going to go uh, right on in uh, to a little test map, and this is going to talk a lot about um, rallying and whatnot. So let's just pull you know, these links off the map real quick, and we'll just we'll take a look here. This is your rally. So if you have a bunch of you know hatcheries and whatnot you know you're gonna have a lot of white lines going to the same point that's assuming that you have all your hatcheries on the same hotkey so if we were to you know come over here add a couple extra hatcheries just for fun yeah I know you like that alright so like I said just for fun um, we now have three different rallying lines. Now, let's say we make zerglings from each of these groups. Boom, 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 boom. And they're rallying basically where they were told to, right here. Now, I am doing a lot of different micro stuff here, and I want to break down what all of that is at this point. First things first, we're talking about rallying. So that is the process of things coming out of your production facilities and going where you want them. What we have uh, right here is basically a rally to home position and we're going to be exploring a couple of different positions over the course of this video. Alright, so we've seen a at home rally position, that is what we're looking at now. I've added some extra zerglings to the mix and we're basically looking now at holy crap that's a lot of units do I click each one individually or what do I do like how do, how do I how, wow I gotta click each one of these to move them well I assume that most of the players watching this actually know about boxing but we are going to delve into this a little bit in more detail now when I say boxing I am referring to this green shape you notice it looks like a box that selects all your units you can then move them left right however you want to move them and you can even do really tricky stuff like this. See, we're now spreading our units out uh, using a technique called small boxing. And, you know, we can bring them all back home. Whatever, big box. So, uh, you know, with that being said, imagine these are not zerglings. Imagine these are really fragile marines and there's a wave of banelings coming in from over in this direction. Now, I'm no Terran player, but and that was not the best split in the world, but all things considered, you know, these things are not going to take as much damage from baneling shots because they're spread out. Um, you know, banelings 
they're only going to explode and kill so much stuff that basically would have taken out that area now of course these were friendly units so they didn't kill anything at all but you're beginning to see why it's good to be able to do this small box technique um, big box of course would allow you to bring everything in maybe send things out uh, say you wanted to attack this bottom right corner of the map right here well all of a sudden you know you don't have to worry about individual unit, clusters units you can spread them out another cool uh, technique about splitting your units uh, that's very similar to small boxing is let's right click all the units over here boom boom now we have a split pretty good split there we sent the major group to one location that was this one here and then as in the process of traveling we just peeled off layers and layers of that let's try that one more time just so you guys can see it again and we're gonna right click here peel off a small layer peel off that small layer take a couple of these out of the group bring these over here and boom we've got a even better split and you guys did see a couple of techniques we're going to talk about a little bit later there but again you see the overall goal is splitting your units um, there's a lot of different reasons you're going to want to do this the banelings there were just one example however this is how you would do it with just boxing we see small box versus big box uh, one other thing you always want to know about boxing is there is a technique to it um, according to day nine at least um, you always want to start your box in the top left corner because your wrist is built in such a way that it's easier to do this than it is to do this now I think that depends more on preference um, you know if you already got the mouse there you can grab it here or grab it here but what you never absolutely ever want to do is this try it try it with your mouse right now this is ridiculously awkward maybe if you're a left-handed player or something that I don't know about um, I'm right-handed myself so I, I definitely prefer the top left or bottom left grab but moving left to right is a lot easier than moving right to left so let's just keep that in mind when you're doing the small boxing technique trying to learn that and uh, I think you'll have a lot more success we're gonna bring these on back home again and move right on into the next section now there are issues with boxing um, mostly head trauma no wrong kind of boxing sorry sh guys shaft is completely off his rocker today a anyway the major problems with boxing is it just takes so friggin long I gotta do this I gotta do this I gotta come over here I gotta come over here ah oh, that took me like seven or eight seconds and that's just not good sure you know MVP or whatever could probably do that a lot quicker than I do but um, most people do have issues with that and that's why boxing is not quite as heavily used as maybe it should be um, and, and you know I'm just playing with the links here a little bit showing even further how hard it is to split things up but what you really want to realize from this is that there are alternatives to boxing and namely that's going to be control groups you see I've already set up a control group number one with all of our zerglings in it um, and that it basically takes the place of the big box um, you know you're still only see you can hear me clicking that that's following them around uh, double clicking your control group will always make it go to that control group so say I have you know these hatcheries on two double tap two double tap one double tap two double tap one double tap two there's camera location keys that work very very similar to this um but yes you have all these units in a control group well this can be both good and bad um say you know you have half these units um where you know they they they're, you're running against banelings, say. Um, you're running them towards banelings, running them towards banelings. Ah, one baneling goes off and you lose the whole army. Well, that's bad. Um, and control groups have really, there's only 10 control groups, so you can't hotkey this small contingency, this co small contingency, this small contingency, this small contingency. It just becomes too much to try microing all at once. 
So what you want to do is, you know, double tap one, double tap one, get yourself locked on. I'm move them over here, and that was with a control group. And now I'm surrounding them. Let's say there's a big base here. I wasn't sure if there was mainlings. There's not any. Boom. I had everything converge. I started off. I'm going to do it again. I started off with the control group selected. Right clicked on where I wanted to go. Double tapped it again. And started splitting. And then hit attack and go. And they would then surround whatever they're going. Now you could obviously uh, time that a lot better. I had three different forces arrive at three different times. But again, the premise is there. Um, just being able to split, surround, doing all kinds of fancy shenanigans um, that you know your opponent may not be aware of. Now, for those of you not familiar with control groups, there's basically three things you're going to need to know. Um, in order to create a control group, you want to select the units. We're only going to select five here. Hold control and press the number that you want to create the control group on. In this case, it's control one. You saw that number changed over to five. It just rebound over my old hotkey. I could do that on three, um, and you know this is both one and three. There's not really much reason to want to do that, but it's there if you want it. Um, let's send these back over here to the original control group and rebind this. Well, actually, we've got five, right? So. So you can see the yellow circles around these five, how I have them selected. Now I'm deselecting those in favor of this bigger group. Watch this. I'm holding shift and I'm going to press one. That will then add all the other units to this original control group rather than rebinding it. This is shift one compared to control one. Boom. I'm back at 28 zerglings. Everything is selected and I can bring it all back around. Really cool, huh? Well, check this out. Let's say there's a Zelnaga Tower over here. Actually, I can build one. Pretty sure I can build one. Oh, come on. I used to be able to build one. What happened? Anyways, um, let's just say there's a Zelnaga Tower here. So I want to send a Zergling over there to it. Boom. Right click where it's going. Shift click one. That actually removes the Zergling out of the group. I'm going to show you guys that again in small uh, range, and then we'll do it in big range. So. Boom, he's no longer selected. See how he gets left behind? Boom. Real, real simple. Gonna do it again, and again, and again. I'm not being too precise with my clicks here, so I'm actually messing some up. I'm gonna show you in a second how there's a much easier way to do this. But as you can see, you know, I'm slowly but surely splitting out wings. Pretty cool. Well, now I've got them all selected back again. Cool. Well, you can actually click lings out of control groups down here too. Boom. 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 Kind of see they're all splitting out. Cool deal. Well, now let's say there's a Zonaga Tower, or I want a Zergling at my opponent's third to know when he takes his third. That's really common. What you want to do is right click their third, boom, hold shift, click a Zergling, hit control and one. You don't ever want that Zergling moving around with this army again, so you rebind the group as control one after shift clicking out the original unit. That way you can spam one all you want, but that mug is still going to stay there. See, he's not moving at all. Cool. Now, just like boxing, there are some downfalls to control groups, and that's what this next setup is designed to show you. Um, where boxing is kind of slow as far as you know splitting and different things like that, um, and you know you always have to have you know a whole screen show depicting all your units. Otherwise, you know you're just bouncing from here to here to here to here here, grabbing units and you know, well here let's even show you. You know, from from here grabbing units, from here grabbing units. Imagine not being able to use a control group here. You eventually, you know, get things to converge, and yeah, I mean that's slow. Okay, so a control group saves you from having to do all that. However, say you have all your queens on one hotkey, as most players do. They do use the backspace method uh, most of the time, um, but 
you know, let's say for instance you do have all your hot, your queen's hot key on one key. That's what we're going to do now. Um, just bound them all to one key. That leaves you to inject, you to inject, you to inject. Um, but you know, the other one's just sitting there. Let's say he wants to spread some creep. Well, you know, creep spread is almost instantaneous here, but in a normal game that would have taken a lot longer. Um, say he wants to, you know, or say your queens are out of energy. Like, say this one's out of energy, but, you know, these two down here have some they can spare. Well, if you have all your stuff, see how they're walking across creep? You know, these guys are really slow. You can have queens basically running from here to here to here. Um, and you have little control of it if you're just, you know, going from base to base to base based on these hotkeys. You it cannot determine exactly where these queens are going to be coming from. Usually, it will choose the queen with the highest energy at the closest hatchery, but sometimes the closest hatchery doesn't have the most available energy. Um, and that's always something you want to be a little bit leery of. So, with all that being said, you know, you don't want to always just grab this and try to defend with all your queens. Because, see, this one's really slow coming to defend. Your queens are showing up at different times. Now, let's say I try to send them all over here. Well, I'm also missing injects, uh, you know, at some of these. I should only really have these three queens, but I'm pulling queens I don't need. I'm missing injects, which really wrecks my chance of actually defending this attack. Uh, were I actually being attacked? So... What you really want to do when it comes to queens, let's go ahead and redistribute these two to every base, is use one queen to inject at home. Uh, and this is for defensive situations, by the way, guys. Use one queen to inject at home, and then bring the other one to wherever you're defending. That, again, leaves your queens free to inject, and you can then box, hold control and grab, by the way that'll grab all units of that type, see, boom, 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 check it out, it's basically the same as a double click, um, or you know, you can just box and then grab these and target down a medevac, say, say it's a medevac he reaper, a uh, medevac with hellion, uh, hellbat drops, okay, so, you know, these guys are going in to defend the you can't just defend with hellbats. So they're going in to, or you can't just defend hellbats with links. Sorry guys, getting tongue tied. Um, you're gonna need something to target down the medevac because the medevac will not take any damage from links, but it will keep the hellbats alive. So you basically need to buffer for your queens long enough for them to kill the medevac. So you hit attack, attack your location. Let's say it's right here. Hold control to grab these queens and then target your medevac. These will buy time for the queens, soak up some shots from the hellbats, do whatever they need to while the queens force the medevac out. A good player will get the medevac out, but the drop is stopped. Your goal in situations like this is not usually to kill anything, it's simply to stop anything of yours from being killed, at least anything valuable. And, uh, you know, that's always worth a couple extra clicks. Um, now, if you had tried doing this with queens and missed your injects, your opponent would have got a huge advantage simply from your lack of production. It's just something there to keep in mind. Uh, a co healthy combination of boxing plus control groups will always be your best bet. It's going to be up to you how to decide uh, how to use them. Um, for instance, here's another example of pretty good use of control groups plus boxing. Here's lings plus banelings. So let's say, you know, we're going over here, then we're going to come back over here. Well, the here we go. Well, you don't want to send your banelings in front of your lings. Let's say this is a, you know, a verse Terran with widow mines. So I just sent my lings forward. How did I do that? Same control group, control one, but I'm right clicking where I want them to go holding control and either grabbing on screen or down here at the bottom and right clicking somewhere else. Boom. Still the same control groups but we slow things down and reposition. Boom.
Guys starting to get it now? Hope so. This is definitely something you'll want to practice, but it, it's very beneficial. Now, there's one other thing you should kind of be wary of because these splits are very beneficial on certain types of terrain. Uh, in particular, we're going to be talking about ramps and choke points. Let's go ahead here to a choke point. Um, we're going to have basically the same unit composition here. Now, let's say that our opponent is here. Let's say they have stalkers kind of surrounding us. Well, if we're attacking into that, ouch. Dude, those stalkers have a much better concave. They're going to be firing on all my units when all my units are still trying to get in position because of this tight little choke point. These will be targeted down before they ever reach it, and these don't have a chance of even reaching it because of the same thing that's just layer by layer peeled off. Now, the same thing is true in reverse. Say the stalkers are coming down this hallway. Well, if my queens are left to their own devices, I'm going to show you, show you what will happen. All right, so we'll, we'll take you slow. And queens left to their own devices. Watch how long this actually takes. I mean, th that was not good positioning at all. Only like these four were actually attacking. Um, you saw how that was kind of bad. Now, if we reposition everything using these uh, techniques we've been talking about, go ahead and pre-set up our concave just by splitting. Watch what happens to the ling this time. Well, <laughs> Shaft made a mistake there, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's try it again. Uh, it, it is actually key to time this right, but luckily for you, you'll have an actual opponent rather than trying to target your own units, so the timing will kind of be automatic. Basically, this link shooting through here will automatically draw aggro. Do, 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 do. Boom. See how all six of those were firing at once? That's pretty good. So concaves are a really, really good thing to set up. You do it just by splitting your units. Uh, three small groups around an opening will do just fine. Moving on, we will be taking a look now at ramps, which are very, very similar, in fact, to what we were just showing uh, with chokes and whatnot. Um, the, the major difference being that you have high ground so your opponents actually have to be you know basically up here up beyond this line right here in order to be able to see you if they do see you then they can start attacking you from any location but let's say you know these are marines with out of medevac one marine will have to go up here while the rest are shooting from you know this position once this one marine dies well these can no longer see um a medevac however will change that revealing the high ground then these two can be targeted off um however it just for basic concave purposes this works just like a choke point Say we have this link coming up. Let's bring these two a little closer. Well, I missed the link there, but again, in your games, you're not going to have to worry about it being a friendly unit you're trying to kill. So, um, try that again. Yeah, so close enough. Hopefully, you get the idea. But what we're going to move on to now is going to tie in all these different aspects of Zerk. So check this out. There's one last thing I want you to know about control groups before we proceed to that part. Um, first things first, we're going to need two more hatcheries. Boom. Boom. And beautiful. All right, so let's make ourselves... Huh, interesting. I have five hatches now. Not sure how it works. Probably a bug in this little um, arcade game. But that's fine. What we're doing here is going to be 
creating a new army. We still have this army. Let's move it on down. Let's say we want to add some ultralisks to it. Now, you saw how those ultralisks, well, basically build instantly. That's, again, part of the arcade game that we're using to show this. But I haven't added them to any control group. Say they're still eggs. Actually, I might even be able to turn that off. Hold on. All right, so we've got our three hatches. We've got an already existing Ling army. Well, let's rally all of our units here because we don't want to have to, you know, constantly be coming, you know, looking at this one spot while we're, say, we're microing over here trying to kill our opponent, you know, doing, doing our little thing. And then we're creating some units. Let's say they're ultralisks. Well, we're going to have to keep checking back over here see if they're done or you know watching the mini map waiting for the units to spawn we're microing ourselves we're hitting our injects you know things are looking good here for for us and we're still just waiting on these reinforcements uh, you know we have really no idea except our own intuition as to how long it's going to take these units to finish oh finally you know, we see them on the mini-map, we come back over here, we hit shift one to add up to our control group, and now we send them back to the attack. Well, that's all well and good. Oh, here are our ultralisks. Cool, let's add those to our group. And we're just sending them all around the map again. Well, there's a better way of doing this. Now, there are pros and cons to this, like anything else, but here's the idea. Zerg is the only race that can benefit from this add your friggin eggs that you know are gonna be army to your control groups so let's say I'm building a couple more ultralisks I hold control to select all of one type that grabs all the building eggs that I know are ultralisks because that's the only key I pressed hit shift one see it went from 33 to 37 boom these are my four ultralisks cool deal and boom they're gonna rally to wherever I've sent my other units kinda cool huh um, now this will only work for right clicks and move commands uh, attacking not so much but that that's fine as well now this can be good this can be bad let's say for instance big bangling busk destroys most of uh, you know, our, our Zerglings. Pretty sure there's a way to delete things around here somewhere. Oh well, doesn't matter. Um, okay, so let's say we were to lose this. And all we've got, let's say we lose this whole army. And we're still trying to apply the pressure. There's like two Ultralisks still here. And we're just using this control group method, uh, reinforcing with Zerglings. So we've got you know just two ultras here on the map and we're reinforcing with those zerglings well they're gonna come here and by that time the ultra should probably be dead unless it's that close of an engagement and you're just gonna rally in small streams of units at a time and usually they'll be coming from different places so they'll come in at far different times and then you know you're sending in one two units at a time well you play the swarm you need overwhelming numbers you need an army like this we had here so in this particular case that would have been bad to do but for the most part it makes having to worry about rallying at home not really a big deal you know you rally at home that way your overlords are going there your units will always come over here now there's a couple of bad things uh, that you also need to avoid. You don't want to build zerglings and drones, grab the cocoon, add it to your group, and then start, you know, attacking or defending or whatever. Because watch what happens. Do, 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 do. Oh my god, drones are attacking! Yeah, nobody's actually scared of that. So, always make sure you're building army or drones grab the cocoon add it to your group and then start you know attacking or defending or whatever because watch what happens do, 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 do. oh my god drones are attacking yeah nobody's actually scared of that so 
always make sure you're building army or overlords or drones because overlords you want to make sure are going to good spots on the map drones you obviously want to make sure are going to minerals or gas and anything else you want to actually be in an attacking position so that being said control shift by the way removes all of a unit type also really good to know see how all those drones just got left there yay okay so there's one and final thing I want you guys to be aware of. Um, remember at the very beginning of this we were talking about rallying. There's three different locations you can rally to. Um, we've covered actually two of them. I just didn't name one of them and you'll see why. The first one we covered is at home. The second one we covered is rallying to your opponent's base. That's what you're doing when you add them to this group and you're attacking with this group because this group's already at his base. Um, you can actually, you know, hit your hatchery key and put these to their base, which really doesn't make any sense to me because, well, then you're going to send overlords there. Um, but... It, uh, by the way, it also suffers from the, you know, sending one, two units at a time in Syndrome. But, let's say, you know, this is our opponent's base beyond this wall right here. If you rally to a point that's just outside of their base, rather than actually being in their base, well, you don't have to, this is mid-attack, by the way, you don't have to worry about in, sending in single units or streams of units, but at the same time, you don't have to worry about the distance of here, the rally at home, to hear the attack. It seems really minor on this map. However, it is not minor at all. Then, you know, you can always, when, once you see this swarm of units kind of get clustering, you can always pull your units back, grab them all, add them back to that control group, and go again. Guys, this is Shaft of the Clanny Casting Crew. Uh, just showing some very minor, basic unit control techniques. I hope you've uh, understood everything we covered here. If not, please throw any questions or comments you have in the uh, comment section of YouTube. And guys, I really hope this helped you out. Please bear in mind, Shift will remove units. Control Shift will remove a whole group of units. And then hitting control and clicking a unit will select anything of that type. That's why, you, obviously, you know, control shift will add, control shift will remove. Um, lots of friendly stuff that just combines the two ideas together. So if you know how to remove things from a control group, you know how to add things to a control group, you'll understand why control and shift work as well as they do together. Hopefully you'll start adding more eggs to your army as you're going along, that way you don't have units streaming about. Hopefully you also learned how to uh, peel off individual links as well as pre-splitting for engagements, um, which, you know, all of this is being displayed on your screen as we speak. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Again, this is Shaft of the Clanic Casting Crew, and thanks for being awesome.